On this episode of Beyond the Stock Price, we're talking about balance sheets. We're going to be looking at what makes up the balance sheet, how it is structured, how to read and analyze them, and how we can actually use the balance sheet as investors to, to help guide our investing decisions. Hi guys, my name is Devroy Davis, the Stock Sage, and welcome back to another video. The balance sheet basically presents a snapshot of the company's financial position at a particular date. It is split into three sections, the first being the assets, then the liabilities, and the shareholders' equity. The, the balance sheet is actually one of the three major financial statements that a company is required to produce in order to keep investors up to date on the financial position or the financial health of the company. The balance sheet is actually provided along with the other two financial statements at the end of every quarter. And those other two financial statements are the income statement or the statement of profit and loss and the cash flow statement. All right, so the balance sheet is actually split into three different sections. First are the company's assets, which are the things that the company owns. Then we have the, we have the liabilities, which is what the company owns. And lastly, we have the shareholders equity, which basically gives us an idea of the worth of the company as a whole. The shareholders equity is actually the difference between the company's assets and its liabilities. Before we look at all of these three different sections, we're going to talk a little bit about the accounting equation. The accounting equation basically states that assets is equal to liabilities plus shareholders' equity. What we're saying is that the shareholders' equity is made up of the difference between the assets and the liabilities, as I mentioned earlier. Now, the reason the report that we're talking about today is called the balance sheet is because it must obey the accounting equation such that whatever is on the left side of the equation is equal to the right side of the equation. And if we take the total assets of the company, the number that we actually get on, on that final line for total assets should be equal to the sum of the total liabilities plus the total shareholders' equity. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about this when we get more into the video. Another thing that we take from the accounting equation is the fact that it's basically telling us that the assets of a company are financed either through debt, which are liabilities, or through shareholders' equity, which would also include those monies deposited by shareholders in the company. So let's look at the balance sheet a little bit more in detail. For this video, I'm going to be using Wisinko's balance sheet as at the quarter ending September 30th, 2019. So let's delve into the assets. Let's look at Wisinko's assets as at September 30th, 2019. The first thing you'll notice is that the total assets is actually split into the current assets and the non-current assets. So what do these two terms mean? By current assets, what we really mean is that these are things that the company owns or has and they can be converted to cash relatively easily, typically within, say, a 12-month span. That 12-month being from the date that the balance sheet is actually um, constructed. The other assets are the non-current assets and these are typically long-term assets such as um, equipment or warehouses or even real estate that the company might own otherwise and use in its normal operations in order to produce revenues and profits. The most current, current asset is cash because cash is cash and is usable immediately. The other current assets that we're looking, that we're seeing here include finished products that are in inventories, short-term deposits, and investments that can be liquidated and turn into cash within the next 12 months. As I mentioned earlier, the non-current assets are those things that the company owns and holds for a long time. They're typically used in the normal course of business. For example, buildings, warehouses, equipment, and, and other things that have not reached their end of life. 
Later on, we're actually going to see how we use these different aspects of the assets of the company to calculate what we call the current ratio or the quick ratio. For now though, let's look at Wisinko's liabilities. As I mentioned earlier, the liabilities are typically those things considered to be owed by the company. Now, if you look at the liabilities of Wisinko, you'll also notice that they're also split into current liabilities and non-current liabilities. So let's look at those and talk a little bit about So your current liabilities are those things that the company owes and they're actually due within the next 12 months from the date that the balance sheet is produced. All right, so now that we've looked at the current liabilities, we can actually take a look at the company's non-current liabilities. So what are the non-current liabilities? Here, you can see that Wisinko has long-term borrowings on its balance sheet on the non-current liabilities. The non-current liabilities are those debts that the company will take on or those instruments that the company will issue as debt in order to actually raise capital for different projects, whether that is to do an acquisition or to expand their current operations. That brings us to the final aspect of the balance sheet, which is the shareholders' equity. So what does the shareholders' equity tell us? Here you can see the shareholders' equity for Wisinko Group Limited as at September 30th, 2019. As I mentioned earlier, the shareholders' equity is basically the net worth of the company. The figure shown at the bottom is the total value of the company. That figure that you're seeing at the bottom actually represents the book value of the company as a whole. We think of shareholders' equity is made up of share capital, and share capital is simply the funds invested in the company by shareholders. A capital reserve and retained earnings. Now, let me talk a little bit about what the capital reserve is. The capital reserve is basically just funds that are used to serve as a buffer and will be used in cases where there are capital losses by the company. So, let's say the company invests in a project and they make a loss on that project or on that initiative. The buffer, which is a capital reserve, will start moving down and it will kind of um, supplement the net worth of the company. The retained earnings is that part of the company's earnings that have not been paid out as dividends to shareholders. In a way, the retained earnings is a sum of all the company's earnings minus the amounts paid out as dividends since the incorporation of the company. The retained earnings is actually calculated by taking the company's net profit, subtracting the dividends paid, and adding it to what the previous retained earnings balance was. So it's a running so that we have a basic understanding of what the balance sheet is and how we can actually read the balance sheet. Let's look at how we actually assess a balance sheet at first glance. So in assessing the balance sheet for the company, one of the first things you want to know is that since the balance sheet is a snapshot, then you want to use it in conjunction with other balance sheets from the same company, of course, over different periods. So if I were analyzing just this balance sheet for Wisinko, I also want to look at the balance sheet for the period ending in June or for the period ending in March. A few key things that we're looking at we're looking at the company's assets and particularly we're looking to see that the company's assets are increasing year over year or quarter over quarter this would mean that the company is actually investing in more either infrastructure more real estate the next thing we want to look at is we want to look at the, spe at the specifics of the current assets and we want to ensure that the current assets is actually more than the current liabilities and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to looking at the ratios and how we actually analyze the balance sheet from an investment point of view ideally we want to see liabilities going down for the company particularly their current liabilities but it's actually quite okay if a company takes on a long-term debt or issues a long-term debt instrument which is a liability in order to finance further growth in the company. 
a company can and probably will take on long-term debt when it's looking to do, for example, an acquisition or if it's looking to, say, expand its operations regionally or internationally. Point I'm making here about liabilities is that growing liabilities is not always a bad thing. What we want to do, however, is we want to ensure that the company still has enough current assets to actually cover its current liabilities, which would actually include those payments that the company would have to make on its long-term liabilities. So let's talk a little bit about the uses of the balance sheet. Ideally, the balance sheet is used to give us an idea as to the financial health of the company. We use it to assess what we call the liquidity as well as the solvency. Now, if we're looking at liquidity, we have to look at both current assets as well as current liabilities. And it allows us to actually calculate a ratio called the current ratio, which tells us how able the company is in terms of meeting its short-term debt obligations. That is, for those payments that are due within, say, the next 12 months, how able is the company to make those payments? And those payments would naturally be coming from the company's current assets. The ratio is a liquidity ratio. Now, the current ratio is calculated by simply taking the company's total current assets, so all of those things that we talked about in terms of the company's cash, its inventories that, is that they're able to sell in the next 12 months, as well as short-term securities and stuff like that, and dividing that by the company's total current liabilities. Once we do that, we're looking to see that, there is, that the number is actually more than one, meaning that the company is sufficiently able to cover all of its current liabilities just using its current assets. There is one more point that I want to mention about the current ratio. We want a current ratio that is, say, probably between 1 and 2. If the current ratio is 1, then we are basically saying that the company is kind of cutting it close. If the current ratio is between, say, 1.3 and 2, then that's actually, we can consider that a really good current ratio. Here's the thing. If the current ratio is extremely high, say for example 8 or 9 or 10, then what it is telling us is that the company actually has assets that it is actually not deploying to the best of its ability. It, that's actually a sign of inefficiency. A current ratio that is too high, let's say between 7 and 10, might not necessarily be a thing because what it's telling us is that the company is not necessarily being very efficient or it is not taking advantage of its ability to actually use more leverage in order to grow the business. Okay, so the other thing that we can assess from the balance sheet is the company's solvency. And by solvency, we're looking at the company's ability to meet both its short-term and its long-term debt obligations. In terms of solvency, one of the more commonly used ratios is the debt to equity ratio. And this is calculated by taking the company's total liabilities and dividing it by the total shareholders' equity. So what this number is telling us is actually what portion of the company's net worth is financed through financial leverage. That is, what part of it is financed through debt. That's basically it for this video, guys. Uh, we're just looking over the balance sheet and talking about how it is constructed and how we can actually use it to assess the company's financial well-being and how to analyze it from, a, from an investment point of view. I've left some references actually in the description, so you can actually go and check those out. But you can also check on this video for some of the definitions of some of the terms that you may have heard me using, as well as some of the other terms that you're going to come across when assessing a company when they publish their quarterly reports. All right, guys. So thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or any thoughts or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I'll be sure to personally get back to you. If there is a topic that you don't necessarily understand and would like for me to do a coverage of that topic on the channel, you can also leave that to see what I can do. Um, follow me on Instagram as well as follow Beyond the Stock Prices Instagram account.
at Beyond the Stock Price. And I will see you in the next video. Bye! There are so many bloopers for this video. Hi guys, my name is Devroid Davis and on this on this episode on on this episode within say a 12 month span as the other current assets include in,